everybody, it's Lee, and I just want to talk to you today about something that seems to come up a lot in divorce cases, and that's emotional abuse. Now, I know that some of you may be saying, emotional abuse, what the heck is that? I know that some people are saying that because we've even had judges or I've heard other lawyers say that in the midst of trying cases, but if you've been the subject of emotional abuse, then you know that it's very real. And I had a, a client that came in recently and I started talking to her about terms like gaslighting or devaluing and discarding. And she was telling me some things that had happened to her um, when she was living with her husband still and how he had subtly began to say critical things to her or he had began to ignore her for days on end or how he suddenly found the sight of her um, horrible and he didn't want to have sex with her anymore. All of these things are emotionally abusive and it's really difficult sometimes to share that with a court. And so a case that's built solidly on emotional abuse is not one that you want to leave in the hands of somebody who doesn't believe it and who doesn't know that it actually is a very real thing. And, and my, my topic today was how emotional abuse is more damaging than physical abuse. And let me tell you why. Because when you're emotionally abused, it's not something that people can see. Of course, I can see it because I can see somebody that comes in my office that's been completely beaten down. And I don't mean um, that you can tell physically. They, they may look the same, but it's the glimmer in their eye. It's the way they hold their body. It's the way they respond to questions because their self-confidence has been completely eroded. And maybe they're afraid that what they've um, experienced is a figment of their imagination. They may think to themselves, am I the crazy one? Because to the rest of the world, the person that is their emotional abuser may seem like a father or mother of the year, may be community activist, may be, have a high paying job, may have tons of support, because that emotional abuse is practiced on the ones that they care about the most. So that's their spouse and their children. And I know that from having done this for so long and, and actually I have some personal experience with cluster B personalities now that this kind of thing can seep into who you are. And even if you're a perfectly competent, successful, in every way, good parent, the things that, that the, the emotional abuser can do to denigrate your confidence can make you lose that confidence in yourself. And so the thing about physical abuse is you can see physical abuse. If somebody comes in here with a black eye or a busted lip, then everybody's going to say, oh my gosh, you've been abused. They can take pictures of it. They can go to the police station. They can put somebody under arrest. Everybody will give them sympathy. People will believe them. But what if you've just been put down every day of your life? What if every single thing you've done is wrong? What if you've been taunted for the fact that you're getting older or maybe you don't take care of yourself or you don't spend enough time with the kids or you don't, and, and let me just stop and say, there are sometimes valid things to say and valid conversations to have. But if it's a one-way conversation and you're the one that's being attacked and the other person is just laying all of the faults on you, that's not valid. That's not valid for someone to just level accusations at you and say ugly things to you without any frame of reference to make things better. They're just being abusive. Now, it's especially difficult to prove emotionally abuse, uh, emotional abuse when you're talking about emotional abuse to your children. And the reason for that is because we can't use hearsay. So unless that child 
is going to be able to come and testify to what they've heard or what's been said to them, then you're not going to be able to get that information in. Now, formerly, we used to be able to have a counselor that could come and testify. And recently, we've had some success with counselors who have gotten the permission of their child, gotten the child actually sign a permission and say, I want this counselor to divulge, basically giving up their privacy rights to the court or to my, to my lawyer or to my other parent. And that's worked in a couple of cases. Or there's something called a guardian ad litem, and that's someone who you can get appointed to, to represent the children's interests, and they'll talk to the children, and they'll have conversations. But again, sometimes even guardian ad litems don't understand emotional abuse. And I wish, to be honest, I didn't understand it so well, because it can be heartbreaking to, have, to be in a relationship or to see emotional abuse. But because I've been practicing law for quite a long time, and because I have seen so many different situations, and I've seen the way people react, I've seen people be incredibly hurtful to each other. And someone asked me once recently about a very controversial divorce. Is this normal? No. It's not, I mean, it's not normal to treat people so poorly. I mean, there should still be a thread of decency in the way you interact with your spouse or your ex-spouse. Because you love that person at one time. So if we have to go into court, and somebody asked me yesterday, are you the hammer or, or I don't really know what the opposite of the hammer was. I would think nail. But they were just saying, are you going to be aggressive? Or are you going to have the soft buzz? That's what they said. And I said, well, it depends on the case. Because I personally don't think that you should go into every case with guns blazing if that's not the right strategy. You can't look at every single case and treat it the same way. But what I do know is that this kind of abuse is, is super insidious and that if you want to prove it, you need an attorney who understands it. And I have had people in the last few weeks when they come in, one woman has broken down and cried because I was, I was listening to her. I understood her. I knew what she was going through. I could identify with every term that she threw out at me and she just sat back in the chair and just had the heaviest sigh. Like, finally, finally someone understands because there are people out there, attorneys out there that don't know what emotional abuse is. And so if you tell them what's been happening to you or your children, they may discount you. They may tell you that you're overreacting. They may tell you to get over it. They may tell you it's not that bad. And if you are that person that has been pushed down, bullied, hurt, then that's the last thing you need to hear is that your thoughts are not valid. You've heard enough of that. You have heard enough that your thoughts aren't valid. So it's a difficult conversation to talk about um, on a Facebook live stream. Some people may be watching me and going, there's no emotional abuse. That's okay. And especially if you're the person who's doing the emotional abusing, you probably have no conception that you're, that you're being abusive. Because oftentimes in a cluster B personality, like narcissism or borderline, they don't know. They don't know how abusive they're being. That's just their bottom. That's who they are. But, and... And, the, fight, and the, the legal battle with someone in that space can be very difficult as well because there's no reasoning with them. There's never being right with them. And there's no, it's, it's never a compromise. So I'm, I'm asking, I'm telling you that you're not alone, that there are countless number of people that can help coach you, can help you get through this place, um, I have a company, Project Positive Change, and some of you may know about that. And, and I have lots of professionals who worked with survivors of emotional abuse, narcissism, um, mental health. And wherever you are in your journey, whether you think you need a lawyer, whether you're about to go through a divorce, whether you've already been through a divorce and now that your ex-spouse is doing absolutely nothing in the court order because they are still the emotionally abusive person they were before you got the divorce. 
it's one of my favorite things to tell people, and it's pretty simplistic, but you divorce the same person you were married to. Suddenly, everything doesn't become great because you get divorced. They're the same people. Sometimes that's not good for you, except that you're divorced. So if you need help in any of these different ways, I mean, if you need divorce help, if you need a modification, if you just need to know that there is somebody else that understands, then that's why I'm doing this live stream. Now I have made a pledge to my community, Project Positive Change, and to my staff that I'm gonna do videos here to help people. And if you watch this video, then I would appreciate it. And I see a couple of people that I know have watched. If you would comment and um, share my video today, and oh, hey there, April, and let people know that, um, that I'm doing live streams, there's important topics to be discussed. And I'm not, I may not be giving so much legal advice because every situation is dif different. But what I want to give you is some practical advice to deal with the kind of situations that you may have as you go through litigation or dealing with people after the divorce. So thanks a lot, everybody, and have a wonderful day.